So in the last podcast, we looked at uh, one way we can classify stars, and that way was just looking at the color, which gives us um, information about the surface temperature of a star. All right. So if we take a look at this picture, we can see uh, we do have different colored stars, but what I really want you guys to look at is we can also separate stars by their brightness. Okay, how bright do they appear or how bright they truly are. So the ancient Greeks uh, astronomers came up with a magnitude system. All right? It was actually Hipparchus uh, who categorized the, uh, the stars by their apparent brightness and he came up with this magnitude system of one being the brightest stars that you could see and then the dimmest stars that the eye could see were six. All right. And one thing that you want to notice there is that the brighter stars are the lower number, okay? And the bigger the number, the dimmer they appear. Don't get those turned around. And the problem is, well, there's a couple problems with this. All right, first off, our eye is sensitive to certain colors more than others. So we have a bias uh, towards certain color stars. And we need to remove the eye from the telescope and put, uh, put an actual instrument up there to measure how many photons of light are actually coming from a star. All right, and when we did that, uh, we were able to modify that, um, uh, that scale. So let me give you a few examples of the current magnitude system. So for example, all right, uh, since the sun is so close to us, all right, it's obviously the brightest uh, uh, star in the sky, and it would have a magnitude of negative 26.7. So uh, you can go into the negatives here. Uh, the full moon's bright, uh, the Venus can be extremely bright also, but the brightest star in the sky, all right, uh, to us, is Cirrus, right? the dog star. It's a negative 1.5. So Hipparchus would have originally had this as a 1, but when we actually uh, hook a sensor up to, our, uh, up to our telescopes that measures how many photons of light are coming from a, a given star, all right, Cirrus is the brightest, all right? Uh, uh, Polaris, which a lot of students will say is the brightest star, um, would be uh, 2.5. All right, it's actually like the tenth brightest star. Now, if you're in town, uh, where you can see uh, the lights of town and and some of the uh, the dimmer stars kind of fade away, <clears throat> you can probably see down to a four. But if you are in the darkest, uh, perfect skies with no clouds, no light pollution. You can see a six on the magnitude scale. This is the, the limit for the, the human eye. In reality, though, uh, where we can see about 3,000 stars on a really good night, there are millions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone, so our eye really can't see a whole lot. Uh, if we have a, a telescope, it allows our eye to collect more light and see dimmer things. In fact, one of the best telescopes that we have is the Hubble Space Telescope. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll study it later on, but it can go all the way down to a 30. So let's talk about this magnitude system a little bit more. Again, the smaller or more negative the number, the brighter it is. Uh, and each jump, all right, it's not that uh, from a 2 to a 1 is twice as bright. It actually is 2.5 times brighter, all right, mathematically speaking. And that means it's sending out 2.5 times more uh, photons. All right. And... What that means, <clears throat> so if we had a difference of one, we had a, a star of a two magnitude and a one. The one is actually two and a half times brighter all right, because it's sending out two and a half times more photons. If we had a difference of two, so we went from a four to a two. All right, so there's two difference on the magnitude scale. All right, it would actually be 2.5 uh, squared, which is about six. If you have a difference of magnitude of three, uh, that works out to be 16. So you want to be able to uh, calculate this, and we'll do a quick little demo or a, a problem uh, example here. So for example, if the brightest star has a magnitude of 1, all right, let's just go with that one for now, but the dimmest is a 6 according to the ancient Greeks, then how much uh, light is, a, how much more light is a 1 sending out to our eyes? All right, well, we need to know the difference in magnitude. All right, so from a 6 to a 1, it's a 5. So 2.5 uh, to the 5th, that's 98 times the number of photons, which means a 1, uh, if we use the ancient Greek method, uh, is actually 98 times brighter. All right, 
Let's try this one. <clears throat> Let's find the difference in apparent brightness uh, for Sirius, the uh, brightest star in the sky, at negative 1.5, and then Polaris, uh, the North Star, 2.5. All right, so we have a difference of four. A lot of students uh, will say there is a difference of one. All right, uh, be careful, plot your negatives. <clears throat> 2.5 minus a negative 1.5 gets you a difference of 4, and therefore 2.5 to the 4th is 39 times brighter. All right, so here's the problem, though, with the magnitude scale. All right, uh, it only measures relative brightnesses. What do I mean by that? Well, our sun is the apparently the brightest object in the sky, right? It's, it's, the only reason, though, is because it's really close. If we were to move it away with other stars... All right, and they were all at the same distances, our star would be pretty small and pretty dim. So what we need to do is take the, uh, the stars and figure out what their brightness would be at a given distance. All right. So I kind of skipped ahead here. So magnitude only tells us how bright stars appear to us, not their intrinsic brightness. All right, because again, take a look at these two stars. The one that, if they're the exact same size and temperatures and giving off the same amount of energy, the one that is really close to us would appear very, very, very bright. With the one that's further away, all right, would appear much dimmer. All right, so what we need to do is to figure out a way that we could assume how bright this star would be if it was at a given distance. All right, and that's where luminosity comes into effect. All right, it's just measuring the amount of energy that it uh, gives off. All right, it doesn't really uh, take into consideration <clears throat> uh, the distance. All right, it kind of ignores it. Uh, another way that you might see sometimes in the book may describe is you could use absolute magnitude. How bright would the star be at a given distance uh, of one parsec? But we're just going to stick with luminosity. All right, so if we know a star's magnitude, and we know its distance, which next unit we'll get into how you can figure out distances in space. You can actually calculate its luminosity, but don't worry about it. We're not going to calculate it here. What you do need to know about it is that if you have it, all right, the units for it are in solar luminosities. L with that little O with a dot in the center of it. That dot uh, down here, center of the dot, is just representing our sun. So it's compared to our sun. How uh, luminous, all right. Is it compared to our sun? Is it two times, 10 times, a thousand times brighter? Uh, or is it half as bright? Things like that. All right, so that really wraps up what you need to know before you jump into the luminosity activity. Um, I'll have a little hot button here that you can click and it'll take you right to that website if you have uh, the worksheet. If not, you need to get that.